Let's get straight now down to El Paso, Texas, where you're watching live pictures there of Air Force One landing not too far away from where NBC's Gabe Gutierrez has been reporting for us on this day. And Gabe, as you heard from Representative Dingell, she's hoping that they can reach the word comprehensive immigration reform. But certainly this might be one of the first movements by this president to actually give a head nod to this topic as being an issue that is important to the White House. Uh, yeah, Richard, and of course, comprehensive immigration reform has complicated many administrations of both parties really for decades. And as we're looking at those live pictures of President Biden about to step off Air Force One, his first trip here to the border as president, as you know, Richard, Republicans have criticized this administration for not, uh, in their view, taking this humanitarian crisis seriously enough. This is his first trip to the border. And we're here outside of uh, Sacred Heart Church, a church here in El Paso, where migrants have been camping out here for quite some time. And we see the president right there um, getting off Air Force One. Uh, he is expected to tour a migrant processing facility as well as a port of entry. I believe it's hard to see from my vantage point, but I believe he is greeting uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there's some glare on the monitor that I'm looking at right now. But again, those live pictures, President Biden, the significance of this. This is something that... Um, you know, his administration says it has been working on now uh, since that influx of migrants especially came to the El Paso area within the last month or so. In mid-December, El Paso officials saying they were seeing up to 2,500 migrants a day come into this area. The White House now says that that has dropped about 70 percent since mid-December, and they announced a series of policy proposals last week that they hope will continue that drop. Among those is that um, now Mexico has agreed to accept tens of thousands of migrants from certain countries, including Nicaragua, Haiti, Cuba, and Venezuela, that will be expelled back into Mexico. The hope is from the Biden administration that that will discourage some of the migrants here from coming to the U.S., but at the same time, the U.S says it plans to take up to 30,000 migrants a month if those migrants do go through the process, the legal process of applying for asylum. Uh, over here, you see, uh, you know, migrants um, here outside of the church. They're, they're singing here. Um, you can see behind me dozens of migrants uh, have been here. This is um, something that we've been seeing throughout the morning. Uh, there have been six arrests here, and last week there were uh, arrests here by federal officials um, that were critics have said that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, local officials may have been trying to sanitize um, the, the, the president's trip here, that he wouldn't get to see um, the confusion among some local officials here that has played out over the last couple of weeks. But again, migrant crossings here have dropped in these last few weeks, and that's what the Biden administration is trying to highlight that they are taking this uh, seriously um, and that they are setting aside money from uh, the infrastructure law in order to uh, make a ro more robust immigration system. And Richard, I want to play, as we keep up this live picture, I, I, I spoke with a local official here that had a direct message from the federal government. She spoke to me a little earlier today about what she wants to tell President Biden. Take a listen. I think they have, they have done zero to prevent this. I think that they're trying to cover bullet wounds with band-aids um, by sending FEMA down here. I'm happy that he's coming, but I hope that he comes and he sees this part of El Paso, not just the rest of the community, but this part, and really talks to the people of El Paso because the, the citizens of El Paso are the ones that elected him. And I hope that they're able to tell him, like, President Biden, this is not normal. And again, that was a former city councilwoman who we spoke with earlier today. But as we look on the left side of your screen there, President Biden, those live pictures, him landing in El Paso uh, for the first time as president, uh, speaking with local officials, uh, local members of Congress. And he's expected, again, to tour a port of entry as well as a processing facility here. Then tomorrow he is, uh, well, later today, but tomorrow he's expected to uh, be at that North American Leaders Summit in Mexico City, all part of an effort by his administration to highlight their efforts here on the border, something that Republicans have long referred to as a humanitarian crisis. President Biden is waking up in Mexico 
uh, facing some criticism, including from members of his own party after his first visit to the border since taking office. It was a pretty tightly controlled visit to El Paso, Texas. It did include meetings with Border Patrol officers, uh, lawmakers, and local officials. But President Biden did not appear to meet or actually see any migrants there, including as he visited a migrant aid center. So everyone asked the White House why that was. The White House says, well, there were no migrants there at the time. It was a coincidence, they say. Our reporting does show, though, that there are still and were when the president visited uh, hundreds of migrants on the streets of El Paso, including children. Uh, Rosa Flores joins us live this morning from El Paso. And that's your reporting, Rosa. Um, that those migrants were there. The president didn't interact with any of them? No, he did not. And that's why the president is being criticized by both sides because of what he didn't see. So let me show you, because this is one of the migrant camps that's here in downtown El Paso. And, you know, the immigration advocates here in El Paso and Governor Greg Abbott usually don't agree on much, but they do raise the same question. If President Biden came here to El Paso to see the reality on the ground about the border and he didn't come here, what's considered the epicenter of this crisis, did he leave with a clear understanding? What do you want to be? Oh, she wants to be a teacher. The Tovar sisters have been living in this makeshift migrant camp outside an El Paso church for a week. Oh, she wants to be Rapunzel. Playing with toys is a luxury they haven't enjoyed since they left Venezuela four months ago, according to their dad. No hay educación para niña, nada. He says that he decided to come to the United States because of the economic situation in Venezuela, because there's no education really for his daughters. The Tobars are among the hundreds of migrants who call the streets of El Paso home, arguably the epicenter of the current border crisis. A scene President Joe Biden skipped during his first visit to the border. A short three-hour stop in El Paso that prompted criticism by the governor of Texas. This is nothing but for show. And protest by local immigration and human rights advocates. You are not alone. Like Fernando Garcia. You think this is a photo op for the president? I think this is it. I mean, three hours. What, what is what you can do with them? But that feeling of disappointment has been transformed into outrage. Outrage over policies like the Trump era pandemic public health rule known as Title 42, says Garcia. That rule allows border agents to swiftly expel some migrants to Mexico. Biden said this about the policy. I don't like Title 42. Just days ago, he expanded the rule to Venezuelans, Cubans, Nicaraguans, and Haitians. I think the only ones happy with the expansion of Title 42 are the Trumpists, conservative Republicans, the people that supported Biden. I mean, we were expecting something different from him. Something more humane, like the campaign promises he made, says Garcia. During his visit, Biden stopped by a port of entry, a migrant respite center, and by the border wall, but didn't appear to see or meet any migrants, which Garcia says means the president was not exposed to the full magnitude of the immigration crisis. Three hours. Is that enough? No. Uh, obviously, it's not enough. The timing of the president's visit is also raising eyebrows because the situation here has significantly improved. Take a look. This is what it looked like in mid-December when hundreds of migrants were lining up in freezing temperatures waiting to turn themselves into immigration authorities. At the time, Border Patrol said that they were encountering about 2,500 migrants per day. Now, take a look. The lines are gone, and the symbol of deterrence here is the Texas National Guard and the fencing they put up. According to DHS, the number of migrant encounters has also decreased to about 700 per day. Seven. Seven. The Tobar sister's favorite toy, a tablet, to learn numbers and the English alphabet. G. G. Their dream, learning to speak English. What would you tell the president? He says that his message to the president is that not all migrants are bad, that most of the migrants are like him. He's a father, he's here with his children, and they're just here for a better life. 
Now, the Tobar sisters are sleeping inside the shelter here at the church. Uh, they're allowed to. Some of the families are. Now, back to President Biden. My colleague, MJ Lee, asked the White House about the president not interacting or meeting with any migrants. And a senior administration official told her that it was because there were no migrants at the respite center at the time that the president visited and that it was coincidental. But, Poppy, I checked the migrant dashboard that the city of El Paso has. Uh -huh. And at the time when the president was here, there were nearly one. 1,000 migrants who were in federal detention. So if the president really wanted to see conditions, uh -huh. I kind of doubt that the president of the yep. United States would have been denied access. Poppy? Right, right. And just it's remarkable what we're seeing behind you, Rosa. Those are migrants sleeping on the street of El Paso, right? You're absolutely right. And we've seen this for weeks. And if the president would have stopped by here, he would have seen right. that there are hundreds of people, and you see them here behind me, Hundreds of people living in the streets of America, I should highlight. This is a city in America, in the United States. Yep. And the top executive of this country came here. He did not came to see this. Rosa Flores, we're glad you're there and continue to be there to show it to us. Thank you for the reporting. Uh, filmatically, I, I pose the same question in the sense that in a couple of weeks, the President of the United States will deliver a State of the Union address. It's not scheduled yet, but he will be standing in the House chamber with a Republican speaker behind him. The Republicans say this was a photo op. The Republicans and their support in their media network have said, why hasn't he been to the border before? Where's Vice President Harris? Why hasn't she been to the border? Does the White House see an opportunity to say, okay, we'll give you some border security money, not the wall, technology, but in exchange, give the dreamers citizenship. Create a guest worker program that a lot of Kevin McCarthy's constituents back home in Bakersfield would like for farm workers and the like. Do they see an effort to pressure the Republicans here or do they just want hands off? You know, what's interesting about the El Paso visit, and it's within this context, is yes, they do. When you talk to advisors, they see this as a divided government is often the times when you can make deals on the most complicated right. and politically toxic issues. Certainly House Republicans will have a say in that. But they feel like there is an opportunity to at least raise an issue that for the two years they controlled all of government never really got off the shelf in any way, shape, or form, in part because this isn't just a Democrats versus Republican issue. There are very significant issues inside the Democratic caucus when it comes to immigration. However, um, and, and so I think you will see the president not only in the State of the Union, but also whenever he gives remarks down in Mexico as well, we'll talk about bipartisan immigration reform. We'll talk about trying to find some semblance of a framework that they can start putting together. And if they don't, try and put this very much in the lap of Republicans as being the obstructionists who got in the way of addressing this issue that has been a very vulnerable issue for the administration politically over the last two years. I do think, however, that when you talk to officials who look at this issue and try and figure out where things are going from here on out, it is a very complex issue. That's not changing. And I think the pathway right now is still very unclear. Yeah, it's a complicated issue, and it's not changing, in part because you can go back to, I covered the Clinton White House, and then the George W. Bush White House when this was front and center. Then in Obama, it's, just, it's, a, it's a complicated issue because it's been part of the dysfunction of Washington for so long. Uh, there were pictures of the president when he got to Texas. The Republican governor uh, met him. Uh, and the Republican governor handed the president of the United States a letter in which he said, you should detain everybody who illegally crosses the border. You should fully enforce that Title 42, which is turn them back, seeking asylum, let them file their claims from elsewhere, aggressively prosecute illegal entry, resume the border wall construction Governor Abbott wants, uh, name the Mexican drug cartels as foreign terrorist organizations. Um, this was an opportunity for a constant critic of the president to politely and respectfully say, this is what I want you to do, sir. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance, maybe not with the Congress, with the governors, is there any chance or are we just in this political standoff over this issue? I, I think we're in a political standoff. I, I mean, I think there is a reason, as you said, this has not gotten done. People are dug in on all sides. And it's something where anything, any type of movement on it could be considered amnesty. Republicans will not do that. You have a lot of debates within the left on how to handle this. And people will point out that it is not illegal to cross the border and to seek asylum. That is not illegal. So how you deal with this issue, it does take a Congress and lawmakers and policy people who are willing to work together. We have not seen that for the past few decades. And back to the previous conversation quickly, both of you jump in. If you're Kevin McCarthy, a speaker, and if, if the president of the United States is the leader of the country, if he made a proposal, is there any chance this Republican speaker on the tenuous ground he lives on could try to negotiate? Any sort of proposal from the Democrats is going to include something like you said, dreamers, and that is not where the Republican Party stands now. They want border security first, and then maybe they'll discuss uh, dreamers, 
illegal immigration, legal immigration, but they are nowhere close to that. And also, yet. we should just point out how toxic it is about to be on Capitol Hill in terms of the investigations, potential impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas. So, I, while theoretically, I completely agree with Phil that it could happen, I also just think that the politics are going to get incredibly difficult for both sides.